bright duty. Every student matters. Hello students, I am Jitesh Gola. And today we are going to start with chapter 4 of class 11th education. That is based on educational thinkers. In this chapter basically we are going to talk about the different thinkers. Few from abroad and few from, and few from India only. So, just let's move to that part. Here in this chapter, we'll talk about the five great educational thinkers of the world who introduced to the learners in this chapter. We'll also discuss about their life, their work and educational contribution of these. Astrology, Frobel, Maria Montessori, all these three in brief and beside that about the Indian thinkers. All these are from abroad and Indian educational thinkers if we talk about that is Tagore, Gandhi with their philosophical contribution, educational thoughts and system of educations are also described here in this unit in detail. In the end, Relevance and the significance of these philosophers and educational thinkers in today's world are also explained. So, this was the briefing of this chapter that we have taken here that what are the different things you are going to learn about and about whom in this chapter and there like these philosophers or the educational thinkers that we have uh, seen right now. We will talk about their life, their work and their contribution in the educational Field. Students of education, if we talk about, they must study the contribution of great philosophers and thinkers of the world in the field of education. Our present system and methods of education are all due to the innovative ideas, thoughts of those great philosophers, thinkers and educators. As we know that in the beginning, the education system was not the same as we can see nowadays and how it was initiated. So, time to time the different changes are taking place in the system as well as if we talk about the beginning, how the initiative was taken. So, definitely somewhere these educational philosophers and the thinkers were the, were the one who contributed in this. Like if we talk about because of their different or innovative or the new ideas were there which were implemented in that education system and which started bringing the change. And when once we are focusing on education and when we are talking about that how the change has been brought in that education system, then definitely that change will be very well visible on our society. Great philosopher, thinkers and educationists like Rousseau, Pestology, Forbel, Maria Montessori, Rabindranath Tagore, Swami Vivekanand and Mahatma Gandhi, they have contributed a lot in the field of education where they made it understand to the people that what is the importance of education and how it can help them in their overall development. Because education, if we talk about it in the beginning, in the initial stage, it was not that much popular among the masses. But slowly and gradually, when these philosophers started implementing the different ideas in that or including the different subjects in that, which led to the development of the people, then definitely that awareness was created among the society or among the people in the society. And slowly and gradually, it became, education became an integral part of that particular society. It is a social process which came into existence. So, in a society we are living, then education is an important part and we can call it as a social process. Social process means which somewhere helping us to bring the change in our society. And obviously when we are talking about the education, definitely it is going to bring the positive change in the society. But how it is bringing that positive change? Then definitely these thinkers, philosophers are responsible or we can say are the one those who are initiated, those who initiated that change with their own ways. The first one we are taking here, John Henrich Pastrology. He was born in 
Switzerland on 12th January 1746 at Zurich. He had received his early education from his mother. As we know that mother is the very first teacher of every child. The same way because whenever the child takes birth from beginning, when he start walking or speaking, the mother is the one who is teaching all these things. And then the school is the formal education or here we can say that mother or the other family members are the informal educators. Those who are providing all such kind of basic values to their child. And it doesn't matter whether your mother is illiterate or literate, educated or uneducated. Because that is not creating the difference. Mother is just the educator without getting concerned with whether she is educated one or uneducated one. Because the values, the uh, the ethics that we, that we are learning from her is somewhere we are not going to get out even in the formal education system. So, here if we talk about testology, he was also the one who got the basic education or his early education from his mother only. He was treated as an odd one in the school. Rousseau's method of education based on nature had a great influence on him. And if we talk about odd one means as we know that all the individuals are not same. Definitely one may vary from other. So, when we are treating a child, it, when we are treating a child in a school, it should not be like that. We have to treat all of them as a one. Because everyone having their own potential, their own capacity or capability. So, based on that, if we talk about somewhere he was having the problem in that or understanding or comprehending the things. So, he was treated as the odd one. Means different from the other students of his class. Somewhere if we talk about the method of education, Wilson, method of education had great influence on his life, on the life of pestology. He entered into many professions, but his inner belief was that he could make a mark in the field of education. It happens that in the beginning or in the initial stage, it is quite difficult to understand that which field is good for you or which for which particular field you are meant for. Slowly and gradually this kind of thing also happened with pestology. He joined different professions but ultimately what he came to know that only the field of the education is the one where he could grow. He became an assistant teacher in a village school. There he proclaimed the most famous slogan psychologize education. So here According to him, somewhere he was talking about that psychology is the one which should be connected with the education. So, that was the same slogan taken by him. But, what happened next? His slogan was rejected at that time. In the initial stage, it was not accepted at all. But later on and even today, we know that his slogan is highly accepted, appreciated and quoted. Because we understand that psychology is one of the subjects which helps to understand a child in a better way. And when it is combined with education, definitely it is bringing the very positive result. He, found, he founded many educational institutes also, both in Germany and French speaking areas of Switzerland. And he wrote many works explaining his revolutionary modern principles of education also. So, here if we talk about that how he firstly understood how he came to know that he is good for the field of education where he could do something good and after realizing that he entered in the same field and he continued with his idea of that education where he combined the education with the psychology and beside that he founded different and many institution as well as uh, many institution educational institution in Germany as well as in different French speaking areas of Switzerland as he belonged to that area where he explained the different revolutionary modern 
principles modern principles of education revolutionary means ideas which can bring the change revolutionary means to bring change in the society so these kind of ideas were initiated or accepted by him and these were based on the principle of education only now if we talk about pestologies naturalistic education here if we talk about we know that uh, rousseau had a great influence on pestology he was first to take educational theory and practice on what is said to be uniform law of nature so somewhere he was in the belief that whatever we are learning from our surrounding and that is the one one of the most important thing and the most important part of our education practical involvement in anything was taken as the naturalistic education and as we know that uh, he had a influence of rousseau so he for means after reading his book and going through his works so all these innovative ideas his own ideas and the ideas of rousseau he was able to get those into more innovative way and which actually brought the new system of education that was totally different from the others according to pestology there was one pedagogical method which was based on psychological psychological necessity and according to him that pedagogical pedagogical method if we talk about he worked on it which was one of the necessity of psychology so here he initiated the same the instructions introduced by pestology were of great success whatever the changes and whatever the instruction or ideas he brought under that was everywhere appreciated and that was a great success for him he said the ultimate aim of education is unfolding of all that is unfolded in child while expanding this aim we can conclude that he aimed at all round harmonious natural and progressive development through the process of education so he was of that view that education is simply doesn't mean giving the knowledge or imparting the knowledge to a child no but according to him he mentioned the ultimate aim the basic aim or the main aim of education should be unfolding of all that is enfolded means every child has a potential only we need to recognize that only we need to know about that and how we can learn about that with that psychology plus education while we are combining the both this is going to be the very good advantage on the part of the child if because every child we know that is different from the other but everyone is having the potential to do the different things and in more innovative way we only have to recognize it clear yeah. and the main and the basic aim of education should not be only the so uh, we talk about that only the knowledge they are getting but that is going to talk about the all round overall development including their harmonious one natural as well as growth or the progressive development and that should be also done with the help of education only here we are going to take some maxims based on pestology philosophy of education and what are these that he used to believe in all these things and we'll talk about this in detail so first one is simple to complex then pupil activity repetition and born teacher not made here if we talk about that the first one if we are taking here the simple to complex means instead of starting it from complex to simple we should always start from simple to complex that's why in the school it is always suggested that never treat all the children as one every child every child is different from other so according to them only the different strategies must be applied pupils activity it is based on the observance that what kind of activities they are involved in because here we are including the psychology with education so our observance is going to play an important role we need to keep focus on the activities of the student repetition 
means it happens if you are repeating something then if you are learning something or if you want to learn something for longer period of time the repetition is going to play an important role in that born teacher not made means born teacher here has been taken it is not something that you can be made nothing can be uh, not that much values can be added to you if really you have that potential where you are able to impart your knowledge in that way that can change a child a simple child into the uh, we can say the very uh, different child or can bring or even we can say the unfold all his potential which are already there but not visible to all so if the teacher are able to recognize that if the teachers are able to bring that change in that child so that will be taken as a born teacher because teacher if we talk about it, is not something that after getting the degrees and all you are going to be it should be within you so all these are the maxims that we have taken here based on the pastologies philosophy of education and these are the important part of that i am showing here this term it is known as the first hand knowledge and not the second hand one it is related to that knowledge should be it is related to that knowledge should be earned immediate actual and genuine experience should be the foundation of knowledge here if we want to know that how we can get the knowledge then immediate actual and genuine means it should not be something uh, means they are asking you to copy down or imitate it should be the natural one that you are getting to know about through your surrounding that you are getting to know through your surrounding not learning or imitating or copying down the things so that is going to be the main base here we can say that is going to be the base of your knowledge so how we can define and show that is knowledge should be earned and how you can earn it it means you need to observe the things around you you need to involve practically in that and the reaction the way you are reacting the actual or the genuine reactions are going to be the one which help you to learn it in better way which help you to earn that knowledge from those things in much better way instead of copying down or imitating the thing the element in knowledge that is directly given in sense awareness also senses perception or sense presentation appreciation or immediate perception that involves fewest elements of rational insight here if we talk about the element which is present in knowledge which is a part of that education only because education we take something which is providing us the knowledge here along with that here if we talk about the view point of astrology also we talk about overall development including the natural or the psychological your uh, growth harmonious one and all so here if we talk about the element in knowledge which is directly given in sense awareness also senses perception Percep perception means your own view point or your ideas or sense presentation apprehension apprehension sense presentation apprehension or the immediate perception mean your immediate or the sudden view point that involves fewest elements of rational insight so that is going to be the most genuine one if instead of copying down the thing or instead of just pretending genuinely you are reacting to those things or genuinely you are getting to know about that so definitely that is going to create the difference and that will bring out that is going to bring out your natural learning that will help you to understand your own potential it was one of his unique discovery and initiative apprehension if knowledge was to possess some intrinsic if knowledge was to possess some intrinsic values for individual then it must be cultivated by his own investigation and love because this was one of the uh, most important discovery done by him or the research or the result here we can say it was the outcome of his unique discovery which was 
based on that idea that if you are going to investigate on your own if you are going to get involved in the things on your own or means practically you are being the part of that then definitely the results are going to be the positive one results will be in your favor and definitely you will be able to understand that what actually the value of those value of that particular knowledge that you have gained from the given situation testology is revolutionary thought and practices in the field of education are as under so here his revolutionary thoughts which helped in bringing the helped in bringing the change and different practices that he followed in the field of education we are going to discuss here the first and the most important thing that was taken was discipline this is one of the important part of student life and until and unless the student if they are not in discipline then definitely they won't be able to they won't be able to concentrate on focus on their aim he propagated loving discipline and thinking love he was against the brutal discipline and said that that repression was by its nature immoral he emphasized on discipline with love so he was of the view point that definitely we know discipline but whenever discipline coming to our mind what are the different thought comes strictness is one that can come to our mind that we have to be strict we have to be we have to beat students but no that is totally wrong according to him he said that if we are talking about this term discipline it must be involved with love thinking love and if and that is the actually process of bringing change in any of the child any of the student you might have seen so many example in your class also or around uh, means uh, in your surrounding that if any of the child is very rebel clear yeah, and if the teachers are also beating them or the when you are trying to teach them something with a very strictness uh, way or in a very strict manner it happens sometimes the child is becoming more rebellious not going to listen to you will react in a negative way or this is the very normal or the genuine reaction that can happen but as you are going to change your strategy instead of showing that discipline with your brutal actions without beating him with love and affection and the care you are going to show then them show means then definitely the behavior of the child will change and that will result in the or that will come out in the positive way so here the first of the point that the practice that is required in the education field is discipline with love here this one discipline with love must be accepted in the same not with any brutal discipline or just repressing them or pressurizing them second one is drawing it was also taken as one of the another important practice in the field of education drawing had an important place in the method of anshun where knowledge is earned at present it is being accepted due to him only in now we know that drawing is one of the integral part of education in your course also you must be having drawing as a subject and why it has been taken as a subject because somewhere here we are going to get the positive impact of that because when we are talking that knowledge is earned clear yeah. so it means you have to learn practically the things and here according to this drawing had an important place in the method of that anshu and if you are able to present your ideas if you are able to involve in that creativity means whatever going in your mind definitely psychological psychological if we talk about that also having the great impact because whatever going in the mind of a child in the mind of a student then if you are able to reveal it through your sketching your drawing somewhere it will be easy to get to know that what kind of a child you are what your potentials are 
so somewhere it is going to play an important role bringing the change next is introduction of new subject matter through his tireless effort study of nature geography elementary science arithmetic especially the mental arithmetic got their place in the curriculum earlier all these weren't not the part of the education only the basic or the few subjects were involved in that but due to the effort because if we talk about the study of nature the geography the area about the land where you belongs to elementary science means the basic knowledge about your own body or the other things arithmetic especially we talk about the mental arithmetic where you are able to involve yourself in the calculations and all they got their place in the curriculum because of the efforts of pestology only then the another one learning of language he introduced teaching of language using the phonetics and syllabics whereas earlier it was done through whereas earlier it was done through spelling and reading only but he changed the system of that from the basic means the foundation was changed here we talk about earlier learning the language was simply learning the spellings and reading it no basic was involved but now what he worked on he worked on the phonetics and syllabics means which taught the child which helped the child or a student to learn that how they have to pronounce the particular word what is the sound of each letter so that helped in learning the basic and then moving to the next level instead of directly jumping on that level so it was initiated by him only that it must be started from the beginning itself and it was a great revolution in the learning of language the next one is object instruction it was a new method of learning in which he suggested to study the object first and then the word symbols so here like if you would like you must be knowing that if you want to teach a child who is one year old what is the strategy you are not going to show directly them the letters a b c no you are going to draw the things apple you are showing and then you are pointing towards it that like here if it a this one you are showing this to a child and showing this apple and that is with a so you are helping them to connect that this is apple and then this letter will come for the particular object so he was of that view point that he mentioned and he focused on learning about or study about the object first and then the word symbol and this is one of the very effective strategy that is working very successfully for the learning of children at the very young age and all these uh, philosophies or the practice that he has involved he involved in his education then definitely it got great appreciation in the same field his famous mottos are what was his actual aim or the motto that learning by head hand and heart learning was not should be only by head all our senses must be so here he was involving he was focusing on involving all the senses basically because he want that if we are learning it should not be like that just by head we are mugging up the things no our hand heart means overall we have to involve ourselves in learning then only it can bring the success to us secondly psychologize education here he connected the psychology with education so these were the two main mottos of his philosophy the next philosopher that we are going to study here is friedrich froebel friedrich wilhelm august froebel was born on 21st april 1782 in germany he received neither early education nor parental care and love so somewhere all these things were missing in his initial life neither the education nor the care and the love which is one of the basic part for any of the child for the growth of any of the child 
So all these things were missing from his life. His early days were full of tears. Means his childhood, if we talk about, was not that much. He was not that much a lucky child to have the loving and the caring parents. He was doing odd jobs till the age of forty. But somewhere. a change was brought and that turning point came in his life came in his life when he joined pestologies school at uberedam and this was the time when the change was brought in his ideologies in his the change was brought in his ideologies and how he brought those changes in himself after completing his studies he created the concept of kindergarten and coined the word which soon entered the english language as well this is a very common word now as the nowadays we call it as kindergarten which which related to the basic education for a child he opened an institution for children of age group 4 to 6 years at at panhenberg it was a new era in infant education and this new innovation made him a great educator made him a great educator and philosopher not only in germany but also in the entire world because here what he focused on he focused on the infant education means his uh, the age group he selected was starting from 4 to was starting from 4 to 6 year old the very basic education if we talk about and nowadays also that kindergarten is very famous term for the education of these young children how strange it was that a man who never enjoyed his childhood still contributed greatly for the joy of the kids all over the world so somewhere he was missing all those things whatever the childhood he had gone through he don't want that other children should have the same experience somewhere the sort of thought was the one which helped him to bring that change in the education system and where he introduced the new and the different ideas for those children to learn the things in more innovative way kindergarten his system of education for young kids is highly popular and followed all over the world that we all know his work in the field of education so his work are given here that where he focused and on what were the things he involved in the field of education so the first one was pedagogics of kindergarten pedagogics of kindergarten the education of men the education by development mother play and nursery songs so somewhere we can see that how the different books and the research he did and he created the new world for the children now we are going to learn about this kindergarten kindergarten is a german word which means garden of children so that has been taken garden of children where they, they can play they can enjoy they can learn something where with the involvement of the different activities they are going to get something innovative out of that something more valuable out of the same in this the children are the plants and the teacher is the gardener so what a beautiful idea he has presented here through that in the through that kindergarten where he advised that teacher should play the role of the gardener where it is helping these seeds to grow up these saplings taking care of taking care and providing their affection and love to these plants means these young children according to him school is a nursery for school is a nursery of future citizen you all must be knowing about the nursery where the different plants are available clear so according to him he just correlated it with that so the idea that he adopted here that is attaching that nature with the child that how if we are treating the child and providing that love and care as we are doing with the trees and all without putting any sort of pressure over them same way we have to treat the children we have to 
provide them the very caring environment and that will actually help them out to grow to grow in a very positive manner the social nature of child is taken into consideration and cooperation socialization and self realization are given due importance in the education of kids because providing education to kids is a very important thing you all must be knowing that child up to the age of 5 year if we talk about are going to learn whatever they are able to after that time period according to some of the philosophy of these thinkers only that after 5 year they are only just doing the progress in that they are just polishing all those values and the things they have learned up to the age of 5 year so the most important part of our life is the most important part of a human life is that initial stage those initial years if at those initial years proper care and the proper education proper care or proper education is not provided to them so somewhere the impact will remain on his life in the future so here he focused on considering all these cooperation socialization and the self realization as the important part of education of kid here teacher takes care of the young children for their natural growth and development in the area of education where they are free to involve in their environment and the teacher they are taking care of these children and helping them to whatever they would like to do they want to drawing they want to do the drawing they want to play they want to sing they want to dance they want to study in what whatever the matter so all these things are taken into consideration and according to the child the things are managed so here if we talk about the philosophy of robel his philosophy of our education of children was based on first education should be according to the nature and needs of the child we don't have to manipulate the things according to the education system according to him he was here to focus that if we want to teach something to the child if we have to give them some values or any learning we would like to impart to a child it should be according to their nature and the need not according to the system of education secondly atmosphere of freedom of the child that is one of the important part of that education philosophy he focused that until and unless we are not giving them the freedom it will be quite difficult for them to learn those things naturally because somewhere they will be hesitated somewhere it will hesitation will be reflected hesitation or lack of confidence will remain among the children so we have to provide them the freedom obviously that should be in some limit but the freedom the basic freedom should be provided to a should be provided to a child then thirdly playground for kids in free natural atmosphere means while he has taken the concept of kindergarten it means he referred it the garden for children it means they should be free to play in the lap of nature so he involved here natural environment the natural environment or the natural or the natural atmosphere must be provided to these kids natural and spontaneous activities for the child like instead of just asking them to mug up these letters or learning the particular things we should involve them in the very natural or the spontaneous thing which can which can come naturally to them without copying down like if you are playing the music don't restrict them to learn the particular steps let them dance let, let them do what sort of different movements they are doing so that is going to be the one of the natural technique or the strategy that we are going to apply here if you are asking the, the young children to stand there and follow you so it will be quite difficult for them to learn because all are not the same we have to understand that and when you are playing the music and simply asking them to do whatever the step they would like to 
so that is going to definitely help them and somewhere they will get the self confidence somewhere it is going to be reflected in their behavior and attitude according to frobel the characteristics of each period should be taken into consideration the education and development of steps so here if we talking about that whatever the things we are taking under that education somewhere it must lead to the educational and the development of step it should lead to the overall development of a child it should not be like that that two such subjects we are taking which are not connected with the growth of child no whatever the things integrated work that can be taken as the integrated this is a new term has been con- has been coined in the new era but this kind of concept actually they already initiated in that time period where they were talking about this integrated learning where the things should be connected with each other and that is going to help a child to progress or get the success in their overall development now we are going to talk about this kindergarten which was introduced by him is based on the three different characteristics the first one self activity they are involved in their own different activities if they are playing let them play let them play whatever the way they would like to play with the ball and the other objects and the other toys or let them free in the natural environment social participation where the group activities are also activities if we talk about that is the group activities group activities also should be the part of that learning creativity creativity while you are involving them in art and craft drawing and other activities so all these are going to be the very important or the basic or fundamental characteristics of this kindergarten system kindergarten system of teaching kids is very popular nowadays you know very well this system had made frobel a household name among educators teachers and student all over the world and this kindergarten term which was or this kindergarten system which was introduced by frobel is very very well known now among the teachers educators students and it is one of the idea which has been adopted because of the outcome of this kind of system because it really help in the overall development of a child providing him self confidence helping him to be the part of presentation because if we talk about the three characteristics we have already talked about that where the kid uh, where the kids are going to be involved in the self activity where they are going to be the part of different creativity where they are going to learn the new things from their surroundings or from their natural environment the next one we are starting with the study of the another thinker or the philosopher that was maria montessori Maria Montessori was born on 31st August 1870 at at Chiavelle in Italy. She was the first woman in Italy to be honored with the degree of doctor of medicine in 1896 and that was one of its kind because no one else had ever received such kind of honor. She was directress of a state run school for mentally deficient children and here if we talk about she played an important role as a director where she was the part of the school which was running for these mentally deficient children and after spending almost 12 hours in a day with these mentally challenged children she used to work hard at night making the different notes tabulating comparing analyzing about these children means simply she was not involved in providing knowledge to them somewhere she was working on their psychology also somewhere she was doing research and doing different kind of studies on these children she was the founder of montessori system 
of education for which she is the best remembered this system of education is popular all over the world this montessori school you all must be knowing so she was the one who initiated this system of education her philosophy if we talk about liberty in environment was the principle of her system means she also focused on the freedom and she was of the view point that if you want a child to learn then definitely the liberty and the freedom must be provided they should not be restricted or must not be bounded in particular sphere then secondly the another philosophy of her education system may be talk about that was active help given to the child for his life extension it doesn't mean that you are just making them handicap no it means you are just simply providing them support and that support should not be come out in the negative way it should not lead to the lack of self confidence in a child it should be taken in a positive way which can help a child to grow and help to and help for his life expansion also the third one she was of belief that development from within means whatever the atmosphere you are providing whatever the things you are providing from the outside but until and unless it is not within you you don't want to get developed you don't want that success or growth it cannot be created you have to just create the things on your own you have to have faith in yourself first and then only the development or the growth can be brought according to her education should be helpful to unfold child's individuality you have seen the earlier philosopher also were of the same view point so somewhere we can say that some common points can be taken among these philosophers or the thinkers somewhere they are having the different view point so that will help us to study about to study the uh, that will help us to do the comparative study also among these different philosophers and thinkers here also she mentioned about the unfolding child's individuality we have to know about the individual that what potential we have to talk about the potential of a individual child what his interest is in what his interest is and what are his needs and according to we need to work child by its very nature is capable to learn here we talk about according to her she was of the view point that every child is having the distinct feature or the distinct personality and they are through nature only they are very well capable of learning they all are able to learn but only the different strategies or the different ideas are or can be the different strategies or different ideas can be implemented for their learning self development of the individuality she was also in the favor of that that if really want their development then we need to help them to talk about their self development and which is just related to a particular individual related to a individual child then principle of auto education means the self education and how that self education can be brought here with self learning or with self involvement in the things another philosophy we talk about she was in the favor of self education through which individuality of the child unfolds and when you are getting that self education means the child should be free and we sh- we have to let them free to observe the things because to observe the things are going to help them out to get that education to get that knowledge from the surrounding self direction they have to direct themselves the individual child must have that potential that they are able to direct themselves they are talking about their own development nobody else should directed them nobody else should give them the direction to do the different work to do the different or follow their instructions but that should be within them only self correction if they are doing any mistakes let them correct it instead of helping them out or instead of 
or instead of pointing them out that you have done this thing wrong make them realize that somewhere they are wrong but let them take the initiative to correct themselves sense training the properly trained sense would facilitate the educational growth of the child and according to her study and research what she found that sense training is going to be the one which will help them or which is going to be beneficial for them to learn about their growth and which will help them to grow in better way so all the senses should be involved in learning is also one of our philosophy motor development if we talk about motor efficiency is complementary to sense training and it should be encouraged so here she focused on this motor efficiency where the training of the senses is required five senses we have the training of each must be there and when we are just giving them the training when we are instructed when we are instructing all our senses then only it is going to bring that motor development individual development must lead to social development and then what she is focusing on that because if any individual is growing in the society or if we are talking about the growth or the success of any individual then definitely that is going to lead to the development of the society and ultimately the development of a country and the whole world so that individual development is one of the most vital thing that we need to keep focus on most vital means most necessary or the important thing that we need to focus on then child's house to discipline the child for both individual and social development so that is one concept has been taken by her that we have to work on the discipline of individual for both the areas while the child is being treated as a individual or when it is being treated as a part of the whole society in both the case it must be there that they are aware that how they have to behave how they have to show their attitude so that is also going to be the one of the philosophy of montessori one of the philosophy of maria then self learning shall be encouraged she also like the other philosopher we talk about she also focused on the self learning by self involvement means getting the things to know or our knowledge earning the knowledge instead of getting imposed by someone so she was also of the same view point now if we talk about beside these philosophies of uh, maria montessori we are going to discuss about the montessori system of learning there are three major types of activities which are involved in that because we know that she was the directress at the mentally challenged school clear where she was doing the different sort of research and learning so many things from them and the same learning in the research outcome which was taken by her she implemented in bringing the change in the education system so here the first one the three activities that we are going to take of this montessori system the first one is exercise for sensory training in montessori system of learning sensory discrimination is more important than reasoning and thinking so here according to maria what she focused on that she focused on the sensory training the training of the senses when it is playing an important role in the learning learning the new things learning or getting accommodate to new environment self education can take place only through the proper only through the popular development of senses and when she focused on self education so how she correlated it with the senses that until and unless your sense organs are not developed when all your senses are not involved in getting to know about the things the self education cannot be acquired she devised graded materials for the developing each senses and 
different materials were required like different activities were involved for the growth of these senses then the second if we talk about the second practice of montessori system if we talk about that is exercise for practical life to take care of one's own self like we talk about to take care of one's own self for example hygiene gymnastic and clay modeling which is self exercise for practical life means practically you are getting involved in these things taking care of your own self your own cleanliness then gymnastic physical activities it involves involved in different physical activities and clay modeling where that is the part of art where you are able to create the new things so somewhere all these self exercise are going to help you in your practical life will let you to learn the new things from your surrounding the third sort of system third sort of activity of that montessori system is didact that is didactic exercise in this didactic exercise if we talk about apparatus were designed and used for teaching writing reading and arithmetic for the children like different materials were designed for involving a child in these sort of learning while they are doing writing for involvement in the reading as well as for the calculation so different materials were designed for the children and that was the part of that montessori system